We're gonna be saying breasts a lot, boobies. Hey there, I'm Elise and welcome back to my channel. So I've brought up a few times in past YouTube videos and also on Instagram that earlier in 2022, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I've been wanting to talk about my diagnosis and also my experience going to the hospital in Korea for a really long time. But at the same time, I was kind of avoiding it because it was just, it's been a very traumatic year. For an entire year, I felt like my life was just crumbling and falling apart and I still haven't fully recovered physically and I haven't fully recovered emotionally. I think I did a good job of faking it so people didn't really realize uh, I guess how much I was hurting but uh, it hurt a lot physically, mentally, emotionally, everything and yeah so I just haven't really wanted to get on here and talk about it but I think that it's very important that I do. I think that sharing my experience will help others to get ahead of potential health issues and also help them to navigate the healthcare system here in Korea. So today I'm going to do my very best to share my experience and share some things that I think are important for you to know if you're in need of any kind of medical service here in Korea. But before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more advice, stories, and peeks into my real life in Korea. Okay, let's start out with how I found out that I have cancer in the first place. In Korea, it is required for companies to sponsor one medical health check every two years for their full-time employees. This medical check is referred to as 건강검진. So how it works is usually those born on an even year will get their check on an even year and those born on an odd year will get their check on an odd year. But because of COVID, over the last couple, well, how long has COVID been around? Over the last three years, the system got kind of messed up. Has it been three years? And so people are just going every year. For now, it seems like you can go every year or maybe it depends on your company. My company has been letting me go every year, so... <laughs> so anyway, this is how I ended up going for a medical health check. In K-dramas, you sometimes see characters going for the Konggang Gomjin, usually by the demand of their CEO grandfather. So they'll all be sitting there together in the hospital wearing the hospital pajamas. Uh, I am not rich, so mine are not that fancy, but same. So in a matter of one day, they will check you very thoroughly from head to toe. And in another video, I'll talk specifically about how to sign up for the physical exam and also what kind of uh, checks that you can register that you want to have done but that's another video today I just want to tell you in general that if you work full-time for a Korean company I highly highly recommend that you go for this Gomjin. and even if you don't have a full-time job in Korea you can still go for this physical exam you just have to pay for it yourself but for about $200 you can find out everything about your body and how it's doing. There is nothing like early detection and diagnosis for a serious illness and I've learned that firsthand because when I went for this medical check, it was found that I had a suspicious looking tumor in my left breast. But honestly, even with that result on my medical report, I still didn't take it seriously enough. I was kind of just like, oh yeah, tumor, like of course I don't have cancer, whatever. Nobody, nobody thinks they have cancer and nobody wants to tell you that you might have cancer. So I kind of just like put it to the side and plan to get it checked out later. So I probably waited about two months before I made it to a major hospital and once they saw the results of my Konggang Gomjin, they decided that they were going to run some more tests and do some more scans. And basically with each test and each scan, they became growingly concerned until I was eventually diagnosed with stage 1 breast cancer. And when the doctor told me that I have cancer, like my world just went blank. Like I have no idea what he was saying after that point. I had to ask the nurse after I walked out of the doctor's office, like, what did he say? <laughs> this was also before he revealed that he was fluent in English. And one thing that is difficult to do is keep your listening comprehension skills up when someone's giving you like the worst news of your life. Okay, but what I found out once I listened to the nurse was that for stage 1 breast cancer, the usual treatment is just um, radiation therapy for about a month and then to take some medication for a few years. 
but for something like breast cancer it's recommended that you go for some added genetic test to see if this is something like in your family something that you could potentially spread to your children and so while fortunately i didn't have the genetic marker for um, passing cancer to my children i did have the genetic marker that showed that i'm highly likely to get breast cancer again if i didn't get chemotherapy so chemotherapy was also added to my treatment regimen and that is when basically things started to crash like i had to figure out how was i going to stay in korea how was i going to stay at my job because without my job i can't i mean i could keep my visa because i have f2 visa but it would be very difficult to renew my visa if i quit my job so how am i going to keep working and like I live alone in another country my parents aren't here i have friends but that's not the same nope so it was just like what was i gonna do because i don't want to give up my entire like life I, I spent so much time building up my life here how can i just like give up because of fucking cancer you know like I, no nope no nope so i researched a lot i found a lot of products that i think helped me i'm gonna share that in another video as well uh, but basically I just decided I'm gonna stay in Korea. I talked to my work so I continued working. I still went into the office too. Basically I didn't really see anybody for a year so nowadays I'm kind of like trying to rebuild my friendships I guess because I've just been like MIA and I've also been MIA on YouTube for the same reason but yeah let's let's keep the story moving along. I could rant and complain for hours. Okay, so let's talk about just going to the hospital. You may be wondering about a language barrier and you might feel apprehensive about going to the hospital because of the language barrier. A lot of doctors in Korea are actually fluent in English. I'm not sure what the education requirements are, but basically in Korea, like if you had the, you know, the blessing of being able to pursue medical school you probably also went to an english hagwon or you might have done a fellowship in an english-speaking country or something like that so a lot of people can speak english my nose got itchy i'm gonna touch my nose when i'm doing these videos but not every doctor and nurse can speak english and even if they can it's some of them you know it's just hit or miss but between my english <laughs> wrong no nope. but between my korean and their english i was okay to go around the hospital by myself but if you're not comfortable doing that a lot of major hospitals have an international or a global center so you can contact the global center to make your appointments for you and you can also ask them to send a nurse around with you who can translate what the doctors are saying so actually even though not, not a brag but i don't need the nurse to go with me but because I was dealing with something that's very serious and also very like mind blanking like I didn't know if I had cancer at the time or not and so I just wanted someone to be next to me I guess in case I stopped listening because I kind of had a feeling that would happen so anyway I did have an English speaking nurse who accompanied me in the earlier parts of my uh, appointments by that I mean uh, she was there for the diagnosis and all of the tests but once I was diagnosed I just started going around by myself if you feel like you need to go to the hospital definitely try to find the global center and get in touch with them first if you try to go there on the day it's possible that one of the English speaking or whatever language speaking nurse is already occupied with another foreign patient. So you need to make them aware that you're coming and make them aware of your schedule in advance. So I mentioned whatever language speaking nurse, they don't only offer English, some of them offer also Russian or Japanese I've seen. I think it just depends on what languages the nurses who are available can speak. It's not like set. So even though she'll probably never see this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my English translating nurse, Minji. Without you, it would have been so much tougher to make it through the hospital in the beginning and also just to get my diagnosis. I really appreciate that you were next to me for that and that you even visited me during my chemotherapy. So thank you so much. Okay, now fast forward through the actual like cancer treatment part. So step one was surgery for me. It's not always surgery, but for me, because I had stage one breast cancer, step one was remove the tumor. 
and I've had surgeries, a lot of surgeries actually, in the US before, so I don't find myself afraid of going to the hospital. I don't want to be there, but I'm not afraid to be there. But all of my previous experiences having any kind of surgery or procedure was an outpatient procedure. So I went there for the day and then I left the same day. And I just assumed that it was going to be the same in Korea, but it's really not. I actually had to stay for four days when I went for the surgery and the first day was just to get your body like prepped for the procedure that's about to come up the next day and by prepped I basically just mean like as hydrated as possible as vitamined as possible they also might do some x-rays and just check your condition to make sure that you can have the surgery that's about to come up so the second day whatever you're there for the second day is going to be for the actual procedure itself so for the surgery for the chemotherapy for the whatever the number of days you stay after will depend on the seriousness of the procedure you had done so for surgery i had to stay for a minimum of two days after and they will just continue to check that you're recovering well that you haven't had a bad reaction to any of the medication for chemotherapy I usually stayed for one day after they were prepared to keep me for two days after if I had a bad reaction or something but I usually left after one day but in the US you just get chemotherapy and you leave and so I really feel like it was a blessing for me to be in Korea for this because like basically I appreciated that they weren't gonna poison me and then send me on my way to throw up and like be sick on my own at home. They at least let you be sick for one more day in the hospital and the nurse will, you know, take care of you. They will get you back to a functioning baseline so that you can like function when you go back outside. Did I feel energetic after? Did I feel like a normally functioning human being? No, nope. absolutely not. I was like destroyed, but at least I knew like they had confirmed that my body was already recovering from the poison that it took in and so I was going to be okay until the next infusion. So yes, even though it's inconvenient to be in the hospital, I had a lot of peace of mind and so it helped me to get through the treatment if i had been in the u.s and alone i think it would have been a different story one thing that is important to know about korea if you have any kind of overnight stay is that it's very common to bring a guardian in korea the nurse is not really responsible for things like taking you to the bathroom or helping you take your food tray back to the kitchen and stuff like that that's something that your guardian is supposed to do and so people usually bring a family member or a friend with them to stay overnight because of covid it was harder to bring a guardian they had to have a uh, covid test within a certain amount of time and that was not working for a lot of people and so nurses really stepped up and started getting more involved with the patients i think it's very possible to go without a guardian actually for my surgery i did go without a guardian because of the covid test i couldn't i couldn't get anybody to go with me uh, for my chemo treatments, I did have guardians because the COVID restrictions had lightened up a bit. So if you need to go to the hospital, but you can't get a guardian, it's okay. But if you can get someone to go with you, that would be even better. I have heard that there are services of people who will be your guard. I mean, you have to pay a fee, but people will be your guardian. But I'm sorry, I didn't use that service. I'm not totally sure. If I can find such a thing, it will be in the description down below. So one more time, I have to take a moment to thank the friends that went with me to the hospital as my guardian. Lynn, Christine, and Yoni, thank you so much for being there with me while I got chemotherapy. Uh, without you guys, like it would have been so much tougher to make it through my treatment. And so I really, really appreciate that. And I will never forget that for the rest of my life. So all in all, I feel very lucky to have been treated for my cancer in Korea instead of the US. I think that I saved a lot of money and I think that I actually got more humane treatment. Besides the genetic test that I had to take, which wasn't covered by insurance and cost $4,000. Wow. Uh, I think every time I went for a consultation with the doctor, uh, this was because I was already diagnosed with a serious illness and my insurance like kicked up really high. I paid about $1 every time that I had a consultation. Uh, all of my radiation sessions were like $20 and every time I stayed in the hospital for, I mean max I stayed was four days, minimum I stayed was three. Each time it was around three to $600 and the price varied because there were certain hormone treatments that were added on to the chemotherapy so it wasn't like 
standard for it to be 600 usually it was around 300 of course i'm saying all of the prices with the fact that i have health insurance here but even if you didn't have health insurance i've, I've seen the regular cost like the cost before the insurance covered it and i still believe that i would have paid less than in the u.s had i had no insurance at all korean hospitals also offer you meals that are very nutritious they've been planned by a nutritionist based on the condition that your body is in and the type of treatment that you're having so for example i was being treated for breast cancer so they brought me a lot of food with soy in it because soy is highly recommended for breast cancer patients sometimes my guardian had a much more delicious looking meal than me and we were sharing and don't tell on me they also had nurses that would come and instruct you on how you should take care of yourself outside of the hospital and what kind of foods you could and couldn't eat what kind of activities you should try to recover more quickly and so i just feel like it was very thorough if you live in seoul there are a lot of major hospitals that you can find compared to my experience in the u.s i also feel like the hospitals at least in seoul are very conveniently located they're easy to get to by public transportation they are usually surrounded by pharmacies so you don't have to go far to to get your medicine i just feel like it was the right place for me to be for my treatment and if you're considering going to another country because maybe you're in the u.s and cancer treatment is just too expensive i recommend that you at least look into going to another country i know that's not possible for everyone but if it is possible for you you will save a lot of money i can tell you that much okay so my goal for this video was really just to give you an introduction to the the yearly medical check and also just to share a bit about how i found out that i have cancer while living alone in korea but this is by no means a full picture of what the healthcare system looks like here so please look forward to more videos on things like how to sign up for the physical the yearly physical exam how to visit a general clinic not a major hospital just like a regular clinic if you have a cold or something like that or how to visit the emergency room if you have an emergency medical situation of course if you have any questions about anything that i covered or didn't cover in this video or if you have questions about life here in korea in general feel free to leave a comment down below and make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that you don't miss out on my next video. As always, thanks for watching. Bye! 다음에 봐요!